Yes, I'm also an artist. But not like Diego. Small things. Nothing serious. No, I didn't study with him or anyone else. One day, I just started to paint. He paints the big outside. I paint the secrets inside. It makes for a very interesting image. You're asking me if there's something that Diego likes to do more than painting. <laughs> but of course, make love, especially to me. No, it doesn't hurt, but I understand your question. Me, with my uterus pierced by a hand reel, like a sword through a bull. I'm small, but I have tough skin. It's the German in me, I think. Or maybe the Jew. I know how to fight for, what to fight, and what to fight for. Love, sex, cigarettes, and tequila. <laughs> Not painting, that's just a fact. Like taking a breath on a cold winter day. You see it go up before it has a chance to go out, proving you're alive. Self-portraits? Well, why not go out and see yourselves as others see you? I prefer to suffer in a Catholic way. <laughs> Publicly. And I never complain. Well, almost never. I simply paint. Hello, everybody! My name is Catalina Cuervo, that was Frida. And today is my second episode of Latin Heat. And as you can see, I am wearing the flower. And today is all about Frida and Robert Javier Rodriguez uh, opera Frida. Um, thank you for being here with us today. And let's dig in. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Catalina Cuervo. Esa era Frida. Yo soy Catalina y el día de hoy es mi segundo episodio de Latin Heat que será todo de Frida. Espero que les guste mucho. Voy a cantar, voy a cantar de Frida, voy a cantar eh, música mexicana. Así que hoy va a estar espectacular. Espero que les hayan gustado mis flores. I hope you like my flowers. They are from my mom's garden. And in any minute now, they're going to drop to the floor. So I apologize if that happens. So, sorry, I dropped my pen. I wanted to start today with something very exciting immediately. Quería empezar el día de hoy con algo bien emocionante inmediatamente para que empecemos a entrar en calor. So we start getting the heat. Um, I'm going to start today actually not with opera. I'm going to start with a beautiful Mexican song from Oaxaca, Mexico. And this song in particular has been around the world. Voy a empezar con una canción muy espectacular, una canción de Oaxaca, Mexico. Esta canción le ha dado la vuelta al mundo completa. Uh, it's from a known background. And, um, and it's been popular, been made popular by many artists. But there's one artist in particular that I want to tell you about, and her name is Chavela Vargas. Chavela uh, did a um, version of La Llorona, and she dedicated it to Frida. Frida and Chavela were like this. And if you go to the internet, and later too, I'm going to put that picture of them together laughing. They were best friends, but Many might say they were even lovers. La primera canción que voy a cantar es una canción que le ha dado la vuelta al mundo. Se llama La Llorona. Esta canción es de origen desconocido, pero eh, se ha hecho muy famosa. Y una de las artistas que más famosa la hizo fue Chabela Vargas. Chabela y Frida eran así, eran muy amigas. Y algunas personas dicen que, que más que amigas, que eran amantes. Entonces Chabela le dedicó esta hermosa canción a Frida y por eso se las voy a cantar el día de hoy. 
So let's dig in. This is La Llorona version by Chabela Vargas. And I hope you like it. By the way, if you've heard this song, I'm sure you've heard it. You've heard it in the movie Coco, in the movie um, from Salma Hayek, Frida. La han escuchado en la, can en la película de Coco y también en la película de Frida. Espero que les guste. Pueden alistar su tequila para esta canción. Please, get your tequila ready for La Llorona. Yes, Joana. Joana's, I know Joana's going to be here singing with me. Actually, salud. Todos me dicen el negro, llorona, negro, pero cariñoso. Todos me dicen el negro, llorona, negro, pero cariñoso. Yo soy como el chile verde, llorona, picante. Pero sabroso, yo soy como el chile verde, llorona picante, pero sabroso. Ay, de mi llorona, llorona, tú eres mi chunca. Ay, de mi llorona, llorona. Tú eres mi chunca. Me quitarán de quererte, llorona, pero de olvidarte nunca. Me quitarán de quererte, llorona, pero de olvidarte nunca. ¡Salud! <risa> Salías del templo un día, llorona, cuando al pasar yo te vi. Salías del templo un día, llorona, cuando al pasar yo te vi. Hermoso huipil llevabas, llorona, que la virgen te creí. Hermoso huipil llegabas, llorona, que la virgen te creí. Sí, porque te quiero, quieres, llorona, quieres que te quiera más. Sí, porque te quiero, quieres, llorona, quieres que te quiera más. Si ya te he dado la vida, llorona, ¿qué más quieres? ¿Quieres más? Si ya te he dado la vida, llorona, ¿qué más quieres? ¿Quieres más? ¡Salud! ¿Cómo les pareció? What did you think of that one? Oh my God, that song is just so beautiful. Let's see who's here. Wow, oh my God, so many people here. Christian, Blanca, Nancy, Long Beach Opera, Marjorie, Daniel Biaggi. Daniel, 
Gabriel, thank you for being here. Oh my God, artistic director of Portland Opera, Marco Fidel, Jessica, Jenny, Tim Pearson. Hello, Daryl, thank you for being here. Simone, oh my God, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Monica is in. Moni Monica is actually um, the stage designer, the produc production designer of one of the two uh, productions that I always do. So this one in particular is the Jose Maria Condemi production, Michigan Opera Theater's production. And Monica is the one that did all my beautiful dresses and my costumes and the scenery she painted herself is really, really amazing. So she, if you've seen pictures of me as Frida is this two productions and she is the genius behind the Michigan Opera Theater production. Thank you for being here. Okay, let's continue. So I wanted to um, recommend some tequila for you today. Quería hacerles una recomendación de tequila el día de hoy. And uh, the person that helped me with this, since I don't know anything about tequila, is actually Ricardo Herrera, um, who is one of the singers that does uh, Diego Rivera with me. He does Diego Rivera in the Michigan Opera production, Michigan Opera Theater production. And he, these are his recommendations. Maybe Marta, que viva el tequila, y Joana me pueden ayudar con esas recomendaciones. Estas recomendaciones las da Ricardo Herrera, que es el cantante barítono eh, mexicano, mexicano-americano, y que hace Frida conmigo en la producción de Michigan Opera Theater. Eh, estas son, son recomendaciones. Primero que todo me dice, hola cejitas, aunque hoy no tengo mis cejas. I don't have my eyebrows today, but this is what he says. Hola cejitas. For tequila, para tequila, recomienda el herradura reposado y el corso blanco. Y también le encanta, le encanta, le encanta el mezcal. He loves mezcal, so he recommends cordón cerrado y el montelobos. Great recommendations. So we... Um, Homegrown tequila is my family staple. Oh, Marta, please, please, please uh, leave us the link in here. Uh, Joana recommends Reposado Corralejo. The one that Ricardo was saying. Uh, Marta, please leave us your, your information here, uh, Facebook page or Instagram or the website so everybody can check it out. So we are up to the second part of, um, second segment of our show today. Hope you're having fun. And this, this segment, I'm going to dedicate more talking specifically about Frida Kahlo. Frida was born in 1907, but she later decided to change the day of her birth from 1907 to 1910, because in 1910 was the Mexican Revolution. Frida nació en 1907, pero más tarde en su vida eh, se cambió eh, la, el nacimiento y puso que había nacido en 1910, que fue la fecha de la Revolución Mexicana. Frida was born with the name, I don't know if you know, knew this, Magdalena Carmen Frida Calo y Calderón. Frida... Frida's name, el nombre, perdón, el nombre, confusión, lenguajes. Eh, el nombre de Frida cuando nació eh, era Mag Magdalena Carmen Frida Calo y Calderón. Imagínese el nombre. Bueno, muy acostumbrado en la época a poner dos o tres nombres. Frida eh, nació de un padre alemán, de descendencia alemana y alemán, ya, eh, y de una mamá mestiza. Y de ahí, pues, ese look de, de Frida tan diferente. Por eso ella, ella se veía tan diferente. Muy mexicana, pero también muy alemana. Frida was born from a German father and from a mestiza or a mixed Mexican-Indian mother, Matilde. And they, um, 
Frida's beauty, because I think she was absolutely beautiful and different, comes basically for that. She is a mix of so Mexican and so German at the same time. Her eyebrows were exactly like her grandmother from her father's side, from the German side. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> um, Frida became, first of all, we can say that nowadays Frida is the most well-known Mexican painter in the world. And you will definitely argue that she is the most famous or infamous female painter in the world nowadays. But she wasn't that famous when she was alive. Um, es muy importante saber que Frida hoy en día es la pintor, pintor mujer más famosa que hay en el mundo. Y también se puede decir, digamos, que está entre los pintores más importantes de México de la historia, eh, sobre todo por su fama, eh, su fama no solo por su pintura, pero su vida se ha vuelto sumamente famosa. Eh, hasta su propia belleza, que algunos mirarían como algo, como una feura, que yo veo como una belleza, la hizo famosa. Eh, y ella se ha vuelto un ícono a nivel mundial para muchas comunidades, un ídolo para las mujeres, para la comunidad gay, eh, bueno, y un sinfín. Frida has become a worldwide phenomenon and she is an idol for females, for feminists and for the LGBT community in the world because she lived a life that was so different um, from the way it was uh, back in the time. You have to think that Frida lived a hundred years ago. And the way she was living her life, she was a couple of things about her. So first of all, she was bisexual. And uh, she was openly bisexual since she was 12, 13 years old. Ella era, Frida era um, bisexual y era abiertamente bisexual desde que tenía más o menos 13, 14 años. Tienen que pensar que Frida vivió hace 100 años. Entonces, si hoy en día todavía es como una locura ser bisexual, imagínate... Um, bueno, ya es mucho más aceptado, pero imagínate ese 100 años. Y Frida lo vivió abiertamente y lo vivió sin, sin tapujos. Amor hacia las mujeres y hacia los hombres. Ella no veía, eh, eh, digamos, sexo femenino o masculino. Ella veía belleza. Ella se enamoraba de las personas. Es algo muy hermoso sobre Frida. Something else that is amazing about her, which is very weird from a hundred years ago, was that it's very famous and people the hollywood version of the relationship that diego and frida had had her as the you know one suffering and and being monogamous and the other one was with the older women out there and that was not the way it happened um i encourage you all i can sit here and talk for five hours about frida but i encourage you all to buy uh, buy the biography uh the hillary bletcher biography that is a green book that will explain and you will know so much about her. But um, what I found out is that they were both okay with having an open relationship and both of them had extramarital relationships with other people. Frida had with females and males outside of the marriage and obviously Diego <laughs> loved women. Um, otra cosa muy, muy importante, difícil, de hay veces entender eh, para nuestros estándares, pero una cosa al mismo tiempo linda y diferente de una mujer ser así hace 100 años, muy avanzada, es que Frida vivió, si, nunca ella y Diego, aunque siempre había la idea de que Diego era un infiel y que la hacía sufrir, bueno, ella sufría, pero ella sufría por todo porque Frida era muy dramática, pero Frida tampoco era eh, leal sexualmente a él, Um, ellos los dos tenían relaciones por fuera del matrimonio y estaban bien y estaban, um, estaban de acuerdo a vivir de esta manera y no les molestaba. Uh, ella tenía relaciones con hombres y mujeres afuera del matrimonio y él, bueno, él con mujeres, él amaba a las mujeres. 
y, y vivían bien y era un arreglo que ellos dos habían hecho y esto es algo muy extraño, sobre todo pensar que esto es la forma que vivieron hace 100 años. Pero lo que quiero destacar es que el matrimonio de Frida y Diego era un matrimonio espectacular. Era un matrimonio con el amor y con una lealtad del uno por el otro increíble. Es muy importante destacar que hoy en día, si no fuera por Diego Rivera, no supiéramos de quién es Frida. Porque él se encargó desde el principio de hacer que ella conociera a los grandes pintores, que conociera a Picasso, que hiciera su primera exposición. Y cuando ella se murió, él fue quien estuvo ese fuego detrás para que la obra de Frida saliera adelante. Es muy importante decir... The Diego and Frida had an amazing, beautiful relationship, the, the way they planned to have it. And um, Diego absolutely adored Frida, like he had her on a pedestal. It's very important to know that nowadays we will not know about Frida if it would have not been for Diego Rivera, because he, he was the first one to push her to show her art, to sell her art. He was the one to introduce her to all the big artists in the world, Picasso. Um, he was the one to make her first exhibition. And when she died, he continued her, her legacy and tried to sell the art and try to make her famous after she was dead. And he always, always believed in her. So it was very, I love that relationship and I just wanted to tell you about it. But anyways, I am talking too much. Estoy hablando demasiado y es hora de cantar. Así que... ¿Quién quiere que cante? Oh my God, so many new people. Nadia, hello. Susan Danis. Oh my God. I love Susan Danis. Susan Danis is the artistic and general director, I'm sorry, the general director of Florida Grand Opera and uh, somebody that has given me so much in my career. Eternally grateful for you. Thank you for being here. By the way, we did Frida uh, in 2019 in Florida Grand Opera. Ah, uh, Cheris, oh my God, I love you, chica, thank you for being here, you're the best. Marjorie Londoño, gracias por estar aquí. Bueno, mil mensajes, pero tengo que continuar. ¿Quién quiere que cante? Who wants me to sing? <laughs> Salud. Okay, so, I'm ready to sing now. And I'm going to sing one of the favorites with uh, In Frida by Robert Javier Rodriguez. This aria is called The Frida You See Before You. This is at the end of the opera. And this is in a moment, a couple of years before she dies, that she realizes that she has become a woman for herself. Like she, she is not dependent on any man or anybody and she's very proud of knowing who she is um, in everything, in the way she dressed, in the flowers, in, 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 in all of that, but at the same time, feeling that she loved Diego, but she didn't need him. She could be an independent woman. Eh, esta aria es hermosa, eh, se llama the, eh, La Frida que tú ves acá, es al final de la ópera de Robert Javier Rodríguez y habla de el momento en que Frida se da cuenta que ella no necesita ningún hombre. Ella decide estar con Diego, pero es una mujer independiente y se da cuenta que ama la forma en que es en ese momento. Ama eh, las decisiones que ha tomado de, lo que, de cómo se viste, de, de llevar siempre a México en su corazón, de vivir nuevamente en México, de, de estar siempre orgullosa de dónde viene, de sus raíces, eh, muy orgullosa de su pintura. Eh, y de todo lo que ha logrado y se siente que esta nueva Frida que, 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 que está acá es la Frida para ella misma, no para que un hombre la exalte o lo que sea, es una Frida para ella sentirse bien con ella misma. Aquí les va el área, espero que les guste.
saying that I should sing a little bit of death dances. Death dances is the first aria. There's two main arias for Frida in, in the opera. And the first aria is death, death dances. Uh, but I'm, I can sing a little bit. Uh, this is when she's in her bed and she sees all the, the death around her. Esta aria que me está pidiendo Nadia que cante es la primera aria de la ópera de Frida y en este momento es después del accidente ella está acostada en cama y ella empieza porque le dan muchos, eh, me, mucha medicina para el dolor que tiene porque está destruida en su cuerpo y entonces le, le está en la cama y, y por todas las medicinas empieza a ver supuestamente que la muerte, la pelona le empieza a dar vueltas en la cama entonces esto es un poquito de Death Dances The dances round my bed at night, but I refuse to die. The dances round my bed at night, but I refuse to die. <laughs> this is la primera aria. That's the first aria from Frida. It's crazy. Let's see who we have here. Today, Maria Emma, hermosa, gracias por estar ahí. Susan, Hannah, oh my God, she is the the um, costume designer, big boss in Michigan Opera Theater. She's the first one that ever did uh, help me. Um, with all the dresses, with absolutely everything, on my first time that I did Frida with Michigan Opera Theater. So I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Okay. What we were hearing at the beginning is actually El Jarabe Tapatío de los Mariachi Vargas. So that was the first one that, I was, that we were hearing. And now I would love to play for you uh, some classical music, which you're going to recognize. Um, Mexican classical music, but ya les, les voy a poner un poco de música, de eh, música clásica mexicana, que van a reconocer cuando empiece la melodía, pero quiero hablarles un poquito de esa música. Very, very important, I want to give some credit um, to my accompaniment tonight, quiero darle un crédito a mi acompañante el día de hoy, que es un computador, pero... Um, the amazing piano play, player that you were hearing is actually Maestro Stephen Carr, who was my conductor in the last Frida that I did with Anchorage Opera. El último, eh, la, la, el acompañamiento que escucharon fue nada más y nada menos que de el maestro conductor ma, eh, Stephen Carr, que fue quien me 
condujo, qué pena que no sé cómo, no sé cómo se dice en español, eh, me condujo en la ópera, la última Frida que hicimos en Alaska. Maestro Stephen Carr is a pianist, uh, fantastic pianist and conductor, and uh, he is a resident um, conductor and pianist for Long Beach Opera. So thank you so much, Maestro. Those recordings, I am sorry that you guys cannot hear it better. Um, I hope to do some videos for you where you can hear it better, but Maestro Carr is playing and the sound and the way he made that recording is just absolutely perfect. So thank you so much, Maestro. So let's continue. Let's talk about Mexican classical music. Vamos a hablar ahora sobre la música clásica mexicana. I was surprised to find that there's so many, so many works by classical uh, composers from Mexico. Millions. I actually found 43 operas. Encontré nada más y nada menos que 43 óperas de, de composiciones mexicanas. Y les estoy hablando eh, óperas que les ha ido bien. O sea, imagínate cuántas óperas hay. So many Mexican um, composers, so, so, so many that I cannot mention all of them, but I wanted to mention a couple of them. I don't know if you're hearing this music. Let me see. actually is from composer Juventino Rosas. Esa, eh, esta música hermosa que están escuchando, que la, que la conocen, es del compositor mexicano Juventino Rosas, que nació en 1868. Hay muchos otros compositores. There's so many other composers uh, that are worth mentioning. There's like a million. Uh, one that, it, that I wanted to mention is because I just love it so much is Guadalupe Olmedo, una la que quiero hablarles muy importante para que la busquen, Guadalupe Olmedo, she lived in 1853 to 1889, ella nació en 1853 y vivió hasta 1889, Guadalupe Olmedo es la primera compositora mujer de México, que sea pues recordada y que haya obra de ella, o sea, muy importante saber, it's so important to know about her, because she's the first female classical composer, like worldwide renowned composer, Guadalupe Olmedo, so look for her, um, there's a beautiful, you can find it in Spotify and YouTube, there's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, quartet in A major, absolutely gorgeous, Um, so I already said Juventino Rosas, which is this waltz uh, called Sobre las Olas. Um, very, very beautiful. Another important composer is Silvestre Revueltas, que hay una obra muy importante que se llama Sensemaya. Muy, muy importante, obra mexicana que tiene un prestigio grandísimo a nivel mundial. There's a Silvestre Revueltas, 1899 to 1944, very prestigious um, work called Sense Maya has gone everywhere in the world and it's the Me Mexican classical pride. Um, one more, Juan Pablo Moncayo. Uno más, Juan Pablo Moncayo, 1912 a 1958, compuso Huapango. Uh, he composed Huacam, uh, Huapango which is one, he is considered one of the greatest exposers of classical music, Mexican classical music in the world. To finish, I would like to mention the amazing maestro Daniel Catán. Para terminar, me encantaría también nombrar al maestro Daniel Catán. Eh, Daniel es el compositor de las obras Florencia en el Amazonas, Il Postino y miles más. Pueden utilizar buscarlo también a él, a Daniel Catán. Daniel Catán composed Florencia en el Amazonas, Il Postino, and other operas. Right now, um, together with Frida, with Robert Javier Rodriguez, I will say is the, are the most performed Mexican operas in the world right now. Florencia has been done everywhere in the United States and now going to South America and, and, 
in Europe. And obviously, Il Postino, it's a little newer, but also doing so well. I'm going to dedicate one episode only, only, only to Daniel Catan, but that's, that's next. So those are some of the composers. So Nadia is mentioning Robert Javier Rodriguez, so, which is who we're talking about today. Robert Javier Rodriguez um, is considered one of the most important American composers nowadays. Uh, Mexican-American composer and he was the last in my list because we're gonna continue all about them. Spell out the name. Yes, of course. L Lisa, at the end of this I'm going to write all of the names of the composers that I want you to look at uh, from Mexico. Jose Daniel Catan. Yes, Catalina as Florencia. That will be a dream. Jose Maria Condemi. Oh my god. Jose Maria Condemi is an um, Argentinian director. Jose Maria Condemi es un director argentino con quien he trabajado muchísimas veces. Nada más y nada menos, Jose Maria Condemi eh, ha, sido, fue mi primer, ha sido, porque sigue siendo, mi primer director de Frida, el encargado de esa primera producción de Michigan Opera Theater y todas las que he hecho, Florida, Gran Ópera, Atlanta. Bueno, esa producción es gracias a él, es un genio. He's a genius, he's amazing. And um, my first Frida, uh, I do two productions. So this production was in Maria's, is the one that I've done so much, Florida Grand Opera, Atlanta Opera, um, Cincinnati Opera. And he's right here. And he did a beautiful production of Florencia en el Amazonas with Florida Grand Opera. No llores. <laughs> Te amo. <laughs> Jose, Jose y yo. Somos la misma persona, somos como Frida, mira. Nos amamos y después explotamos y después nos amamos. <risa> como toda buena relación, José, que, que, que debe haber eh, de dos artistas pasionales. Eh, él hizo una gran producción espectacular, búsquela para Florida, gran ópera de Florencia en el Amazonas. Y yo, como dice José ahí, soñaría con poderla hacer. Soñaría con poderla hacer. Bueno, seguimos. ¿Quién quiere que cante? <risa> Estoy lista para cantar la segunda canción. I'm ready to sing the second song from Frida today. And uh, the second song is actually my favorite. La segunda canción que voy a cantar el día de, de, de hoy, de la ópera Frida de Robert Javier Rodríguez, es mi canción favorita, es mi área favorita. Um, I have actually, now that my, my husband is here, I want to tell a little story about it, which is for Florida Grand Opera, there was something very special. Uh, the bath scene is called the bath scene. And um, in Michigan Opera Theater's production, I am in a bath and I am topless. And it's very sexy, it's very sensual. And it's a moment where Frida is taking a bath and she is with three lovers. Es un momento muy hermoso en la ópera, un momento en que Frida se está bañando, está en, un ba en una tina y está con tres amantes, dos mujeres y un hombre. She's there with, with, her, with her lovers and um, it's very sensual, it's very beautiful. Please, it, there's little pieces of it uh, online, but it's just my favorite music. But what I was gonna say is that for Florida Grand Opera, I had the best lover of all. So, actually, uh, yes! <laughs> Susan just gave it away. So, what happened was that we were in Miami, somebody needed to lift me up, and I said, my husband can lift me up. <laughs> Yo dije, mi esposo me puede levantar. Así que contrataron a mi esposo, a Cristian, para hacer esa escena, y fue... Mi lover número uno, el más hermoso del mundo, eh, obviamente sabe cómo levantarme ya a este punto, ¿no? Y también lidiarme, lidiarme y levantarme. <risa> Espero que les guste. Aquí va The Bad Scene.
with her lovers <laughs> oh my god that music is so beautiful esa música es demasiado hermosa demasiado, demasiado Robert Javier Rodríguez es un genio Robert Xavier Rodríguez is a genius oh my god so beautiful so now we're gonna hear Huapango Huapango eh, de, uh, of Jose Pablo Moncayo Huapango de Jose Pablo eh, Moncayo the one that I was telling you, one of the greatest classical pieces while we talk in our last segment. So we are very close to the end and I just want to talk a little bit about Robert Javier Rodriguez and his opera, Frida. Robert, uh, Robert Javier Rodriguez is a Mexican-American composer. He lives in Texas and he composed Frida around 88 to 90 and performed it for the first time or did the premiere of Frida in 91. Robert Javier Rodriguez es un compositor mexicano-americano que vive en, vive en Texas y él compuso a Frida más o menos en 1988, 1990 y en 1991 hizo a Frida, el debut de Frida fue en el 1991 con la compañía en Filadelfia. Um, the debut was with the company in Philadelphia. Robert Javier Rodriguez, like Nadia says, is a genius. He has composed many, many, many operas, about eight operas, he's, he's, and he's still being prolific. Uh, quartets, instrumental music, and music for children. He's really fantastic. That's an amazing opera where I met him for the first time called Tango. Hay una ópera espectacular de Robert Javier Rodríguez Corta que se llama Tango. Y ahí fue donde yo lo conocí. En el 2013, estaba haciendo yo María de Buenos Aires con Florida Gran Opera. In 2013, I was doing... Maria de Buenos Aires with Florida Grand Opera. And we were doing a double bill with Robert Javier Rodriguez. Um, when we finished both operas, the maestro came to me and he said, hi, Cata, my name, Catalina, my name is Robert Javier Rodriguez and I composed an opera based on the life of Frida Kahlo and I think you're perfect for it. I think he was right. <laughs> bueno, en el 2013, eh, Robert Javier Rodriguez Hizo un double bill, o sea, hicimos dos óperas, María de Buenos Aires y Tango, la ópera de él al mismo tiempo. Cuando terminó el show, él vino a donde mí y me dijo, Cata, Catalina, me llamo Robert Javier Rodríguez, ehm, y yo compuse una ópera de la vida de Frida Kahlo y yo creo que tú eres perfecta para ella. Estaba, o sea, completamente de acuerdo, eh, eh, acertado. Two years after, Michigan Opera Theater decides to do the rebirth of Frida 
and um, they called me for an audition. David DeKiera, the late David DeKiera, the great, who I miss every day, um, artistic director and founder of Michigan Opera Theater, decided to do Frida in a time where Detroit was vibrating all about Frida. They had the exposition at the DIA, the ballet was doing Frida, it was all about Frida. And I went for an audition with other singers and thank God, I am Frida Kahlo. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Jose is mentioning Monica because the first, the, the, the production is just so beautiful and in every aspect. And I think it was the key players and one of them definitely, as I said before, is Monica because, you know, what she did, all of that you see actually on stage is hand painted by her. So it's absolutely amazing. Um, anyway, so that I wanted to tell you a little bit about that. And I also want to mention um, the other production that I do, which is absolutely beautiful and very different at the same time. And it's a production that I was only able to do this year with Anchorage Opera, and that is the Andrea Smitisek Long Beach production of Frida. It's absolutely beautiful. It's more intimate. Um, it's less, uh, less characters and everything is more intimate but it's really, really powerful at the same time. The production with Andreas Mitisek, I was supposed to do this year with Long Beach Opera and due to COVID-19, I'm not there. Eh, la otra producción que quiero también que sepan, yo hago dos producciones, una la de Michigan Opera Theater y la otra es una producción muy hermosa, muy íntima de Andreas Mitisek, que es la producción que acabé de hacer en Alaska. Y esa misma producción la iba a hacer yo con Long Beach este mes, pero por COVID eh, ha sido cancelada y bueno, pero esas son las dos producciones importantes. I also always also wanted to mention my main my main Diegos and that is Ricardo Herrera and Bernardo Bermúdez. I really want to talk to you guys about them. They are absolutely amazing in the role. I it's such a blessing for me to be able to work with them that I feel that I need to say salud para Ricardo y salud para mi Bernardo. Ay, bueno, um, en español que lo que estaba diciendo es que quiero mencionar a mis dos gran compañeros con que hago las producciones, Ricardo Herrera y Bernardo Bermúdez, que realmente son grandes cantantes y compañeros y me siento muy afortunada. Bueno. Salud. To finish, I want to actually. I have something that I have to say in Spanish. This is this is a birthday. Don't tell people. <laughs> Para terminar eh, el día de hoy, les tengo le tengo una sorpresa a una persona muy muy especial para mí. Creo que me voy a seguir. Este tequila me lo mandó mi tía Dora Cuervo. Como que es muy bueno. Yo no sé nada, a mí todos me saben rico. Pero este tequila me lo mandó Dora Cuervo. Y me lo voy a servir por ella. Y me lo voy a servir por lo siguiente. El día de hoy es el cumpleaños de mi tía Luchi Cuervo. Today is my aunt's, my aunt's birthday. So I have something special for her. Eh, tía Luchi, te amo, te adoro, te venero y te dedico este capítulo de Frida el día de hoy y te mando un beso enorme y espero que te guste lo que te voy a cantar. Salud para todos. Gracias, Juli. ¿Quién anda por ahí? Marisela, un beso enorme. Cal, I love you, oh my God. Salud. ¿Quién está listo para las mañanitas? <risa> Espero que todas la canten conmigo, que todos lo canten conmigo. Tía Luchi, te amo, salud. Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba el rey David. A las muchachas bonitas se las cantamos aquí. 
despierta, di bien despierta, mira que ya amaneció, ya los pajaritos cantan, la luna ya se metió. ¡Salud! Bueno, mis amigos, el tiempo se nos ha acabado. My friend's time has finished. And as Frida will say, ¡Viva la vida! ¡Viva la vida! Los quiero mucho. Gracias por haber estado aquí conmigo. Por favor, váyanse a casa feliz. Bueno, están en casa. <ríe> Tómense un traguito por mí y amen la vida. Eh, gracias por estar aquí hoy. Muchos besos. ¡Que viva la vida!